So dear students, uh, uh, in this video I'll be talking about particle ac accelerators and uh, why we need these particle accelerators, what could be the, the, the basic requisite uh, uh, that forces us to have better and better particle accelerators from physics point of view. And, uh, and these particle accelerators have, have other applications. Uh, they have applications in medical science. Uh, they have applications in, uh, uh, in, 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 in dating out uh, the, the old structures. Uh, they have applications in, in, uh, in having some, some, some understanding of nature of particles at a very, very basic level. So uh, certainly the things, uh, ha things were happening around the pioneering work that was done by, uh, that was done by Rutherford. And, and his associates, uh, with the aid of uh, of, of fast uh, moving particles that that were uh, that, that were emitted by that were emitted by radioactive substances, radioactive substances, and 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 there had been a strong uh, incentive to to invent some means of, of, of producing fast particles, both in, in, in greater number and, and greater energies uh, than those from what could be achieved from these radioactive substances. So there, there was always a thirst for that, to have highly energetic particles uh, uh, and, and greater number of these particles, and, and for making uh, the, the, the investigations of, of nuclides, and and uh, the, the, the particle accelerators, they, they are basically the machines for importing uh, high energy particles, high energy particles, and ranging from uh, ranging from mega electron volts to giga electron volts, uh, certainly to the charged particles charged particles and what are the charged particles electrons are the charged particles uh, protons are the char charged particles alpha particles are the charged particles so uh, deutrons are the part charged particles and uh, and and certainly to to bear nuclei of of some some atoms in the form of ions so it could be electrons protons uh, deutrons Alpha particles uh, and and some ions of uh, uh, some lighter atoms. So, uh, uh, if, if we talk about uh, if we talk about uh, the, the the necessity to have uh, to have a particle accelerator in nuclear physics, uh, why we need these particle accelerators only in the context of uh, physics. Uh, apart from having a tremendous applications in other fields like medical science and, and other, other domains. Now, the very first uh, aim is to create a new particle of mass M. New particle of mass M. And, and we need at least an energy. Now, what should be that energy? That should be given by E is equal to mc squared. And, and, and for, for the state of uh, the, the mass approximately equal to, 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 to the proton. And if we, have, if we have a proton to be created from a mass, uh, uh, we need nearly, uh, from this equation we can calculate it, we really need nearly 1000 mega electron volts of energy. So if I have to create a proton-like particle artificially, I need uh, I need an energy of 1,000 mega electron volts approximately. And high energies are also necessary. They, they are necessary in, in studying the structures of nucleuses. So, so as much as uh, you are able to distort the conditions of a nucleus, uh, it's like interrogating a person. If we have to get some information from a person, what we do is why we interrogate him. And uh, we exert some external forces. Uh, and uh, and possibly uh, there, there happens to have a good probability to get some information. And, and same thing goes here with, with the nucleus. As much as 
highly energetic particles that you have uh, are, are going to interact with the nucleus and disturb the system inside uh, if we can have uh, more insight into the into this into the nuclear structure now now let's take a small mathematical uh, demonstration here if i uh, uh, if i talk about the the, the reduced de Broglie wavelength of, of a particle uh, of momentum. I have a particle, it has a momentum P and uh, it has wavelength lambda and it has a Planck's constant H associated with it. And if I define, uh, if I define the, the, the reduced wavelength, reduced de Broglie uh, wavelength, uh, it, we can write down say chi for that. This chi is is lambda by two pi, and and this uh, is simply h cross by by p. So so if this chi is a representative of the the reduced de Broglie wavelength, this is simply h cross by p. So what we have here is a re reduced de Broglie wavelength, and uh, we understand what is h cross is h by h by 2 pi and we can have its value 6.5 uh, a2 times 10 to the power of minus 22 mega electron volts second consistent with the equation is equal to mc square so so what we know here is that that h, h is a Planck's constant now now what we know from optics uh, th that to see the detailed structure of an object if we have to see an object uh, uh, of some linear dimension, we have an object of linear dimension d. Uh, we must have a wavelength comparable to this uh, this wavelength, and uh, it should be compa comparable to or smaller than, comparable to or smaller than this d. And for this wavelength, that uh, the the p required must be. The, the momentum of the particle required must be greater or equal to this h cross by d. So what we see here is that that for a very small object like uh, uh, this, the, the small objects like we have the particles in nucleus like nuclear particles, high momenta uh, uh, they have high momenta therefore they have high energies. And, and what is needed here is that this d should be of the order of 10 to the power of minus 15 meters, what we call as one fermi. And proton as a probe, as a probe, what we have, we have proton as a probe. Say, uh, say for example, say proton that we have uh, uh, for, for, for to probe this, the kinetic energy required to, to see this linear dimension of one fermi. In order to see this linear dimension of one Fermi, we need an energy of uh, we need an energy of uh, nearly 20 mega electron volts, and this is not possible with the naturally produced beams like radioactive beams. Uh, therefore, what is required here is that we must uh, uh, we, we they must be produced artificially. The, the highly energetic particles must be produced uh, artificially uh, so that uh, we can have some understanding of the nuclear structure. Since in particle accelerators, we, what we need is we need highly accelerated charged particles. And let's try to understand the basic mechanism that's involved in, uh, in, in achieving that acceleration. Now, what it involves basically is the Lorentz force. It starts from, from Lorentz force. And what's Lorentz force? That is F, it's a vector. It is NEE -E, uh, plus uh, NE by C uh, V cross B. And I have written this, uh, uh, this Lorentz force in, in CGS units. So what we see here, we see here that, that a charged particle, I mean, let's go with, with uh, let's go with some some diagram over here. Let's have uh, a positive plate. Let's have a, a negatively charged plate. And and let's go with uh, 
Okay, so this is positive and this is negative. Now, what we have is uh, a charged particle uh, which we place uh, in an electric field, in this electric field. What it does, it gets accelerated by the force, and that force is zero e e. Right, and this uh, e is our electric field, and and we we can write down e is v by d. Okay, that's the case. Now, what happens is that it acquires an energy, uh, say E, kinetic energy, and that energy will be simply the charge it carries times the, the potential energy. Because we have a basic equation of, so this will refer to the overall charge that this particle has. And, and this V is the potential difference that, that's, that's across these plates, uh, that's across these electrodes. Now, this... Uh, involves the electric field component of this, this Lorentz force. And if we, if we talk about the direction of electric field, this is the direction of the electric field between the two plates. Now, what we have is we have parallel plate, uh, we have two plates, we have two electrodes, positive and negative, and, uh, and between them, what we assume is, is a charged particle. Now, if we take the non-relativistic case, then this kinetic energy is simply, uh, uh, this kinetic energy is ZeV, and that is one half of mv squared. Let me use m naught here for the rest mass of this particle. Uh, this is simply ZeV. That should be the case. So, uh, so the, the charge of particle that we have, uh, it's, uh, it's carrying some energy. Uh, it's carrying the kinetic energy. Now, uh, if I have to write down this equation as 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 kinetic energy, uh, as a, a relativistic equation, so what it will be? It will be simply m naught c square uh, times one by under root of one minus v square by c square minus one. Because what we have is is this kinetic energy is m naught. It is sorry m c square minus m naught c square. So for this m, what we use is m naught by under root of one minus v square by c square. This is the relativistic mass. So now in order to accelerate the particle to the high velocities, uh, the voltage is required. So, so if you want more velocities, we want more, uh, more voltages. Such high voltage sources uh, were used uh, in, in, in early times, in early types of uh, accelerators uh, and uh, the accelerators like Van de Graaff's uh, generators, uh, Cockroft uh, uh, generators. Uh, it was Van de Van de Graaff Van de Graaff generators. So what they tried always is to have tremendous amount of voltages in order to have accelerated charged particles and uh, uh, Cockroft. and Walton accelerators. The, the, these are the, the old accelerators uh, in which uh, the, the, the basic focusing principle was enhancing the, the voltage across the electrodes. Now, the high voltage produced uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the machines, uh, uh, certainly uh, there are limitations. We have, we have limit due to the problem of insulation. We, we need, we need classic insulation and uh, and leakage and energy as high as 5 to 8 mega electron volts only this much of energy uh, can be produced could be produced in those times and uh, and and th there was always uh, the problem to deal with these uh, these types of uh, uh, particle accelerators and uh, as regards of the power, these accelerators can handle very low ion car currents, the discharge that will develop inside. So the other method of acceleration that involves, uh, that involves magnetic induction. Magnetic induction part of this Lorentz force. So first we talked about the electric part of this, this Lorentz force. The, the other important part of this Lorentz force is the uh, what it involves is the is the magnetic part that is uh, uh, that is what's written in in CGS that is NE by C 
That's n e by c v cross p. Oh, so, so vectors should be kept in mind. Everybody knows now. Now what is a vector and a vector uh, means it's a vector. So so a particle moving at right angle to the direction of magnetic field. Suppose I have uh, I have a particle and this particle is say so this this is the the particle and we have the magnetic field perpendicular to this plane. Okay, the magnetic field. So what's going on here is that we have a moving particle and uh, at right angle to the direction of magnetic field. It's acted upon by a force perpendicular to both. Due to this particle, uh, Due to this, the, the, the particle moves in circular orbit because it experiences a force, and that that for the direction of that force always makes this the motion of this particle uh, in, in circular orbit. So, uh, so if that's the case, then we we have a circular motion. So it has a centripetal force, and we scale by r, and that must be equal to this magnetic force. That must be z b uh, v by c. Okay, so this is my Lorentz force. So from here, we have sine 90 equal to 1, and what we have is Z E B uh, V by C. So Z refers to N, N is taken here as a general number. Now for a particular particle, for a particular ion, uh, it has been replaced by Z here. So what can I have is the radius, and what will be the radius? That will be M V C by B Z E. Now, if the magnetic field that, that thuds the circular orbit changes, okay, uh, an induced electromotive force uh, is produced. Uh, so there, there will be an, an electromotive force that will be produced. That, that will be produced because of the change in the magnetic flux that's enclosing this, uh, this motion, which will accelerate the particle. So this thing is going to accelerate the particle. Now, if we talk about the, the general types of, uh, of particle accelerators, uh, we, may, uh, we may broadly divide these particle accelerators. Uh, uh, we may classify them as uh, the, the very first one I would like to call is electrostatic, electrostatic uh, accelerators. And, and for that, what we have is uh, we have uh, Cockroft uh, Volton accelerator. We have, okay, let me write it uh, Cockroft uh, Walton accelerator. And we have Van de Graaffs. Van de Graaffs. Uh, and, 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 and they're used to have another what's called tandem. Tandem accelerators. And the value of electrostatic potential fixes the final, final energy. It is dependent on potential. So potential is something that, uh, uh, that fixes the energy of these charged particles. Uh, and, and these accelerators are purely based on electro electric field. That's why we call them as electrostatic uh, uh, particle accelerators. Now, the next class of accelerators is uh, uh, cyclic accelerators. So now what we have is cyclic accelerators. And particles are accelerated by some non-conservative uh, electric fields associated with, with the variable magnetic field. Now, in these uh, accelerators, particles describe the closed paths. They describe the closed paths many times and gain energy. They keep on gaining energy by describing the closed paths. And, uh, and uh, uh, they keep on gaining energy and in, and in, in each excursion that they have, uh, consequently the energy of the particle is not limited by the maximum potential difference applied. So in this case, uh, uh, the, the, the final energy that the particle has, it does not depend on, uh, on, the, on the potential difference that has been applied across these particles. So, so if the trajectories of the particles are straight, uh, 
the corresponding machine is called a, a linear accelerator. So if the particle is moving in straight direction, uh, uh, what we call this thing as, uh, as, as a linear particle accelerator. Okay, and, and the things in which these trajectories in which these trajectories are curved. If we have curved trajectories, uh, uh, they are simply called as orbital accelerators. So what we have, uh, we have, if the charged particles move linearly with the fields, electric field and magnetic field that's applied on them, then the, the, the particle accelerator that we have, we call it linear particle accelerator. But if electric and magnetic fields are, are, are applied in such a way that the overall motion of the charged particle is curved, then such particle accelerators are called as uh, orbital, uh, uh, they're called as orbital accelerators. And uh, uh, so we have linear accelerators and we have uh, orbital accelerators uh, where we make use of both electric field and magnetic field. And, and these accelerators that, that, that I talked about, what they include, they include cyclotron, okay? And what else they include? They include betatron. What they include, they include uh, synchrocyclotron, they, they include electron cyclotron, proton cyclotron. These particle accelerators, we would like to have discussion on them uh, one by one in the future course of work. Now let's talk about Van de Graaff's generator. It certainly has, uh, it certainly has to do uh, everything with electric field and uh, it falls in the category of electrostatic accelerators. And uh, uh, let me draw a, a rough sketch of this, uh, this, uh, this generator and try to understand the, the, the mechanism of working of this, uh, this Van de Graaff's generator. In fact, uh, this, uh, uh, this generator was designed by, it was designed by uh, Van de Graaff in, in 1931 uh, at Princeton and uh, at Princeton in, in United States of America and uh, what we have is is a dome like thing and let me try to draw it and what we have is we have we have to have a tube And okay, in this tube, what we have is uh, is we have the charge, we have the charged particles, and and we have accelerating voltages. All this goes on like this. <coughs> These are the resistors. And, and here we have plates of these, uh, these resistors. Okay, so this is how it goes. And then what we have is, we have the target, and let's assume this is the target. And here we, we have those, those highly energetic particles and and here we must have a local vacuum so this is my target t and uh, what we have is is a belt okay certainly we need a motor for it and then we have have the power supply and here we have no. 
it hasn't become that good but let it be okay so the dome has gone a little bit bad okay so let's take this as no problem let's go with it and uh, here what we have is the is the is the is the gas supply basically of positive ion source positive ion source and uh, this is my pressure tank and this is my positive ion source and this tube is uh, uh, it's a, it's an it's an evacuated accelerating tube evacuating accelerating tube and uh, this this belt show me some direction here go with the charge and and this is going to be the positive charge All right uh, and and here we have charge remover point okay so let me call this as point B and let me call this as point A and this is my motor it has been designed okay so so here I will have the high voltage terminal high voltage terminal now now, now what's happening is that 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 uh, what we have to do is, in order to accelerate a charged particle, uh, when we subject that charged particle to an, to an, to, an, uh, to a high electric potential, uh, uh, then then this charged particle can can accelerate. That that that's the basic case. Now, in this generator, uh, an an electric charge, say for example, Q, uh, from from the Earth potential, uh, uh, is trapped. To, it, it's basically not trapped. It's transported. It's transported to a to a large spherical. Uh, condenser uh, uh, C and uh, uh, by means of an endless uh, belt running this belt goes on running 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 and and creating a lot of potential difference uh, in the condenser region uh, at the dome uh, between the two uh, uh, two cylinders and 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 this results in this results in voltage and that voltage is simply Q by C and uh, now what happens here is that uh, we have a voltage of nearly uh, 30 kva uh, is used to spray the positive charge so we must have a spray point here here we are spraying we have a spray point here what we do is we spray the positive charge uh, uh, on this insulating belt and this belt uh, is made of a rubber or, or silk uh, at this point A. So spraying the positive charge at this point A and the belt is driven, uh, uh, it, it, it is motor driven basically and continuously transfers uh, uh, these charges to the dome shaped uh, uh, terminal uh, from the point B. Now when the positive charge on the belt uh, arrives at corona point B that we have here, they create they create the large negative field at this point and uh, at the point B and what it does is uh, this is this helps in neutralizing the charge uh, on the belt by the negative charge by the negative ions while at the same time the large uh, uh, we have uh, at the same time we have positive charge uh, and this positive charge gets deposited on the dome shaped conductor that we have it gets deposited on this, uh, on this dome-shaped uh, conductor. Now, as this belt is 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 continuously in motion, the charge transfer over over the dome is repeated over and over again, uh, and and the dome potential rises. Uh, it keeps on rising gradually and attaining an equilibrium value. When when the rate of loss of charge due to the leakage to the surroundings 
uh, that that we have what we call as this leakage charge is called as corona charge or corona discharge and and the rate of uh, gain uh, the, the two uh, things the, the rate of leakage equals to the rate of gain and and charge are removed from the dome mainly due to the passage of the uh, passage of the ions to be accelerated right now uh, now now this this is due to the corona discharge and and due to the leakage uh, due to the leakage from the from the supports now in order to reduce this this corona discharge that that surrounds this environment uh, what van de graaff's assembly this whole assembly is 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 placed it is placed uh, in a steel pressure tank now this is uh, the the steel pressure tank the outer layer it's a steel pressure tank and what it encloses encloses it encloses nit nitrogen gas at a pressure of about uh, 10 atmospheres 10 atmospheres and ion source is placed uh, inside the hollow hem hemisphere and the ions are accelerated down the tube uh, onto the target that's located at the low voltage end uh, of the tube. Now, Van de Graaff's generator can, can be used to accelerate particles like uh, like protons, electrons, deutrons, uh, and uh, up to an energy of about one mega electron volt can be achieved. And this maximum particle energy that that can be realized with the type of uh, accelerators is is relatively small in comparison with with most of other types of machines and but at the same time it this 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 generator is advantageous over other types of accelerators uh, on account of its uh, its better sensitivity and the control of the voltage that can be executed now this van de Graaff's machine with a suitable modification if if some suitable modifications are carried out this uh, on this uh, this this Van de Graaff's genera generator, uh, what what can be achieved is we can achieve the, the particles having double the energy than that of this uh, this Van de Graaff's generator, and we call such devices as tandem 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 accelerator. So uh, so so in this case, uh, what we have, if if we are, what we do is we modify. Uh, the, the certain important key points in the Van de Graaff's generator, uh, and uh, and and such generators we call as uh, uh, we call as tandem generators. And in those generators, we can achieve an energy of the 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 the, the ejected charged particle. This energy can be doubled, so it can be nearly two mega electron volts by simply modifying the design of Van de Graaff's generator and we call uh, this generator as tandem accelerating generator. The rest of the principle is same as that of Van de Graaff's generator. Now in this video dear students let me talk about linear particle accelerator. So linear we understand it means straight and and the aim of uh, having an accelerator is only that that we want highly energetic uh, charged particles. And uh, then we understand that, that how these highly energetic ch charged particles are utilized to, to understand the nuclear structure or, or any other application uh, in the field of medical science or in, in any other field. But here we are, we are all only interested in, in learning the principle and working of this linear accelerator. And this instrument was basically, it was, it was developed by uh, Sloan and, and Lawrence in 1931 and what it does is uh, it uses the principle of a repeated application of accelerating potentials uh, and it, it was it was an improvement basically it was an improvement over DC type machines uh, that were developed in those times uh, in which the accelerating voltage is provided by by high frequency high frequency oscillator and, and those high frequency oscillators, what they do is they produce high voltage oscillations. And uh, the nature of that oscillation is V is equal to V naught sine omega T. And uh, let, me, let me draw a particle accelerator, the rough diagram of a particle accelerator. And uh, we go with it. 
que so here we have a target and we call it target and here I have this is the iron source and it's a vacuum pump and what inside I have is coaxial let me try to draw them So we have respect to we have respect to connections with them. Okay, we go here. I have a, an RF oscillator, and and here I will connect it with this and the next one. I'll connect with this and the next one I will bypass like this and connect with this I would like to call this as C1 this is C2 this is C3 and this is C4 and and here we call this C okay so these are collimators and uh, okay so this is a rough sketch of, of a linear particle accelerator and uh, what happens here is that we, in a linear oscillator uh, what we have is we, we have a source of ions and uh, what, what's produced here is positively charged particles and these, these positively charged particles are collimated using these collimators and uh, along the axis of uh, the, the, the accelerator through a number of uh, hollow uh, cylinders of increasing length so here the length has gone a little bit shorter in every case the length is is increasing with respect to the uh, to the previous uh, uh, cylinder which are placed uh, uh, coaxially uh, in this high vacuum chamber now the alternate tubes that we have they are connected to to form two junctions you can see that which are connected to two terminals of an alternating uh, uh, radio frequency source and the positively charged ions, what they do is they travel with the same uniform, uh, uh, with the same uniform velocity within these uh, cylinders. Now, because uh, because of the absence of electric field uh, inside, uh, uh, because because of the absence of electric field inside, I mean, when the ions come out uh, of the cylinders, so suppose the the ion comes out of of, of the cylinder. Uh, uh, the the R of power supply provides the maximum attractive potential at that time, okay. And and the gap between the adjacent uh, and this uh, this this gap that we have between these two uh, adjacent slenders. So what happens here is that that this uh, uh, this radio frequency power supply uh, it it provides uh, it, it makes available maximum attractive potential uh, across the gaps between the junction uh, between the adjacent cylinders now it is achieved by using cylinders of increasing length uh, and proper frequency of the rf source that we are connect connecting now such a thing is uh, uh, such, 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 such a thing is termed as synchronization and we'll try to understand it here now suppose a positive ion leaves the cylinder uh, at some time uh, 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 at some time when the first cylinder that I have uh, C1 in my case has got the negative potential okay now the ion will get accelerated across the gap and travel with the uniform uh, with the uniform velocity in in this c1 now the length of c1 is chosen in such a way that when the ion when the ion comes out of this c1 the potential of c2 uh, becomes negative and it means that the time taken by the ion to, to traverse c1 is exactly equal to the half uh, is, is, is exactly equal to the half the time period of the R of oscillator that we have been using. Uh, uh, so, so, so when its potential 
changes the sign exactly at that time. So the ion will again. Now, now what's happening here is that 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 what we are trying is that 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 uh, uh, that the potential of C two becomes negative, and it, it certainly means that the time taken by the ion uh, to traverse the C one is exactly equal uh, to to the half of the time period of this RF oscillator when, when its potential changes the sign. Now the ion will uh, again get accelerated. It will again get accelerated in the gap between C one and C two and its velocity will increase further. Therefore, it will travel with greater uniform velocity through C3. So, so this process will go on. Now, now for this ion to take exactly the same time, that is half the period of RF field, to travel through the cylinder C3, so that it, it gets accelerated through the maximum negative potential between C3 and C4. The length of C1, C2, C3, and C4, uh, they are cho chosen such that in every case this length goes on increase, increasing. Now let us assume that, uh, that an ion of charge Q, if I take an ion uh, of charge Q, uh, and this, uh, this, uh, this ion gets uh, accelerated through n number of cylinders, like C1, C2, and Cn, and uh, at, at, at a time when RF oscillator provides the maximum voltage, Vm, across the gap, across the gap, the energy gained by the ion is, so what will be the energy gained by ion? What will be that? That will be simply the number of these cylinders, the charge of this particle, and the, the maximum potential difference that we are applying. So this whole energy is, is going to be the kinetic energy of the particles. It's going to be the kinetic energy of the particles. So what does that mean? I will have one half of m v n square, I'll use vn here, equals n q, v, v here is potential, maximum potential difference. Well, m is the, is, is the mass of this ion that we have chosen of whose charge is q. So I can calculate this Vn, the velocity of this charged particle, and this will certainly be 2nq Vm uh, by m, and that too under root of this whole thing. Now, if the length of the nth cylinder, if I if I if I go with the with the length of the the nth cylinder, the length of nth cylinder, if I choose it as ln, and and choose the time as t. And this t should, should equal half the time period of the RF oscillator. That's the necessary condition, that this t is half the time period of this RF oscillator. So t can be written as ln by Vn. And this ln by Vn should be what? It should be, the, it should be half the time period, where t here is, where t is time period. So what's going to happen here is uh, is that this reciprocal, if I if I choose uh, t here, what's t is the time period, and and time period is basically the reciprocal of frequency. Frequency is reciprocal of time period, and and we can have modification. We can have modification in in the above equation. So what will be that? Uh, we can write down the equation for ln. So what is ln? Ln is that is Vn by, by 2f because of this relation. And Vn already I have. How much is Vn? Now Vn is 2nq Vm by m, that 2 under root of that. So what will be the length of the nth cylinder? Its dependence will be uh, 1 by 2f times 2nq uh, Vm by m under root. Better is to put an under root here. Okay. Now, what does this equation tell us? This equation tells us that, that the length of the cylinders, it should increase. It should increase in the ratios of 1 is to root 2 is to root 3 is to root 4. With such accelerators, uh, I mean, with, with such accelerators, protons have been accelerated up to 
up to 35 mega electron volts. And electrons have been accelerated up to one mega electron volts. There's a hell of mass difference between the proton and electron. So, so these accelerators are used for generating monoenergetic, singly monoenergetic particles as the energy resolution of these accelerators is absolutely beautiful. It's good. Now let's talk about Cockcroft Walton Accelerator. And uh, this accelerator uh, was developed in 1932. And uh, Cockcroft and Walton, uh, basically what they did, they employed an, an electrostatic accelerator uh, based upon the voltage multiplier principle. Voltage multiplier principle. And we can see the diagram, the rough sketch of this, this Cockroft Walton accelerator. And what we can see here is we have a number of condensers as C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. Uh, they have equal capacitances and they are arranged together with the rectifiers uh, R1, uh, R2, R3, or R4. Now these, these rectifiers uh, in the original experimental setup, uh, these rectifiers were of vacuum type, vacuum tubes uh, in the original set. But, but now uh, they are made of uh, some semiconductor devices like selenium uh, and in effect uh, they act, act as switches. Uh, to this uh, to this particle accelerator. Now the, the transformer that we have uh, it applies an AC uh, a voltage of, of maximum value say V dash uh, which may range from uh, 25 kilovolts to 100 kilovolts uh, at, at the secondary output. Okay so uh, so so between the two uh, columns what we have uh, uh, between the two columns of uh, 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 of uh, of these these condensers. Now the point B is uh, you can see here this point is grounded to zero potential, and and the potential of A, uh, the potential uh, of this uh, this point. Let me call this as A, and uh, let me call this as C. Let me call this as D. Uh, let me call uh, this I have already called E and F. So what's going to happen here is that. Uh, that the potential uh, that the potential of a uh, it oscillates between uh, minus v and plus v minus v and and plus v and for the first negative half cycle uh, that we have uh, uh, of this b goes positive uh, with respect to a and the rectifier that we have r1 here it conducts uh, and when it conducts, uh, C1 is charged. The C1 is charged to, uh, to a voltage equal to V, V volts. And during the next half cycle, what, what happens is this R1 is, is no longer conducting uh, uh, and, and leaving the point C that we have, uh, leaving this point C isolated at a potential V, the potential V that we have. It leaves this at potential V. Once charged, the condenser will the condenser will, will remain, it will try to maintain the potential difference of, of V between this uh, C and A. So, so that during the positive half cycle, what's going to happen with the positive half cycle, the point C uh, will acquire the voltage of 2 volts with respect to the ground. And since this cycle, I mean, in this cycle, this R2 conducts. And therefore, the charge accumulated on C1 is now shared with C2 that we have on the other side. Now, on repeating the first half cycle, uh, the, the condenser C1 is recharged. It is recharged up to the voltage V. Now, in this cycle, C2 retains its charge now. Now this C2 retains the charge and is increased by sharing C1 again uh, during the fourth half cycle. That's, that's how the story goes. Now after a few cycles what happens? An equilibrium is reached when there is no current uh, through R1 and R2. There's no current through R1 and R2 and the potential 
of d that we have and the potential at this d is now equal to the maximum potential at c and with respect to the b and that's going, going to be 2 volt that's going to be uh, 2 volts now if uh, if now the condenser c3 that we have uh, and c4 these two condensers are added through the rectifiers r3 and r4 the potential appearing finally uh, the potential that uh, the potential that will finally appear at at f uh, is two volts with respect to d, and we can say that the potential at f is uh, 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 so we can say that the potential at d with respect to d uh, is two volts here with respect to b with respect to b how much it is. With respect to B, it is 4 volts. With respect to B, it is 4 volts. With respect to B, it is 4 volts. Thus, by using such an arrangement of two capacitors and two rectifiers, uh, now these rectifiers, uh, they, they, they may be called as voltage doublers because they are doubling the voltage. The voltage V can be multiplied up to any multiple of V. And, and the high voltage between the terminals of the machine is applied. It is applied to accelerate the charged particle in an evacuated accelerating tube. And starting from, say, 100 kilovolts, uh, this Cockroft Volter accelerator, uh, uh, it could obtain an output, it could obtain an output nearly 400 kilovolts in their first accelerator. And in later forms, particle energies up to 4 mega electron volts uh, have been realized using these, uh, uh, these accelerators. Though the maximum energies which can be obtained are low uh, as compared with other accelerators, but still it provides fairly a large iron current at some constant voltage. Now let's talk about another particle accelerator which is known as cyclotron and it's also called as Lorentz uh, cyclotron because it was it was visualized by uh, uh, E.O. Lorentz E.O. Lawrence in 1931 and uh, and uh, instead of building up a very high voltages that we that we did in case of uh, electrostatic particle accelerators like Van de Graaff's generator uh, uh, ions could be accelerated using relatively low voltages by by means of a radio frequency field. I think the best thing is first to first to draw a rough sketch of uh, of this uh, cyclotron and and go with it. So this is my magnet, and I can think of this magnet. Okay, so this is the north, and this is the south pole of the magnet. So the field lines are field lines are like this, and and then uh, uh, what we have is uh, what we have is is a something having D's on it. Let me try to draw it roughly. Okay, it's gone down. Okay, let me try for this now. Okay. Then uh, what we have, I've gone a little bit higher. Okay, so, so the point is to get the concept here. And here I'm going to go. And here I'm going to go like this. And... Uh, and let me connect it and and let me let me have let me have a d shape here let me have another d shape here all right and and then what i have is is a radio frequency oscillator and from here, what we get is uh, we change the polarity of uh, of the electric field, and uh, 
there, there would be some, some deflector plates be used. And let me assume that this is, this is D2 and this is D1. And, and uh, this is how it goes. So let me make, let me try to make it like this. And uh, let's see. So what we have is uh, we want to talk about uh, this uh, cyclotron. And uh, 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 instead of accelerating the particles using uh, the potential difference, uh, what we make use of here is the uh, is the ra is, is radio frequency oscillations, and uh, uh, in, uh, and and uh, and make use of magnetic field. And that magnetic field is perpendicular to the path. Uh, uh, to the path of motion of the ions that are that are allowed to move. Those ions move in uh, uh, they move in some spiral path on application of uh, of constant magnetic field, uh, constant and uniform. So 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 this thing has to be uh, between the poles of this magnet. Now uh, th th the ions could be accelerated to a, to a few mega electron volts, uh, a few mega electron volts. Uh, without the use of uh, cylinders uh, of gradually increasing the length uh, as in the case of uh, a particle accelerator linear particle accelerators or, or or having high voltages in case of van de Graaff's generator so thereby eliminating uh, the, the problem of insulation that is arising otherwise due to the high voltages that we had in case of uh, in case of van de Graaff's generator now since the particles are compelled to cross same accelerating gap uh, uh, repeatedly because of the cyclic spurling uh, uh, in, in the magnetic field. Uh, yeah, so, so the length of the path is uh, increased uh, uh, without increasing the length of the apparatus. Now the path uh, is increased. Uh, you are, we are not supposed to increase the length of the apparatus. That, that was the case of linear particle accelerators. Now this concept was basically, as I said, that it was introduced by Lawrence uh, in 1930 and, and was tested experimentally by 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 Livingstone, it was tested by Livingstone in 1932, uh, and and Professor Lawrence was uh, was awarded Nobel Prize in Physics uh, uh, in recognition of this achievement, uh, and the machine first named uh, it was named Magnetic Resonance Accelerator, uh, and was later given uh, the concise name Cyclotron uh, due to its quasi-circular. Uh, path of the ions uh, inside the, these Ds. Now, uh, in, in this simplest form, what we have is that the, the apparatus uh, consists of two flat uh, semicircular metal boxes. So this is a flat me metal box. Uh, it's semicircular. We call them Ds uh, as D1 and D2. And because uh, their names, uh, their names are a result of their shape. D. So, uh, so these hollow Ds have their uh, diametric uh, edges uh, parallel uh, and, and slightly separated from each other. So, so they are slightly separated from each other. I couldn't make a better diagram. I'm sorry for that. But, but it, it certainly does have openings. These Ds have openings. And, uh, and, these, uh, uh, and, and what happens? A radio frequency alternating potential that's supplied from here uh, of the order of 10 megacycles per second. Uh, mega cycles per per second its frequency uh, uh, in terms of megahertz so uh, so second is uh, what second we have is that uh, uh, so uh, so what what we are doing here is basically that we are applying this radio frequency uh, alternating potential uh, of the order of 10 megahertz uh, uh, and this is applied between the d's uh, and which acts as electrodes. Now the D's are uh, these D's are surrounded by closed vessels. Uh, they are containing uh, they, they, these closed vessels are containing hydrogen uh, or helium, uh, hydrogen gas or, or helium gas. Uh, so uh, and the pressure inside is very low. It's of the order of 10 to the power of minus six uh, mm of mercury. Uh, or, 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 or what we have is uh, uh, is that uh, that uh, that uh, so, so this much of pressure has to be maintained inside, uh, which is of the order of ten to the power of minus six, and uh, and, uh, this, and and this whole apparatus is closed. The whole apparatus is this whole thing that we have here. Uh, it is placed between the poles of this strong magnet that we have. It's placed between the poles of this 
this strong magnet, which provides the magnetic field of the order of uh, 20k gauss, kilogauss. Uh, perpendicular to the plane, so perpendicular to these, uh, this plane of these. The ions are, uh, uh, the ions are extracted from the chamber uh, with the help of uh, negatively charged particles, uh, negatively charged electrodes with a potential of uh, 50 kilo uh, volts. So ions are, are separated from their sources. Now, to analyze this, if I assume that, uh, that we have a positive charge, a positive ion uh, be emitted from some source, uh, and the and the R radio frequency field is such that this this D2 is positive and D1 is negative, and the ion will radially be attracted to D1. It will be attracted to D1, and and because of the actual magnetic field that's perpendicular to this plane, it moves the uh, what it does it it moves the the charged particle in a, in a circular track. It moves the charged particle in, in a circular track. If I start from here, uh, okay. Uh, and, and, and the radius of that, that circle can be calculated. So we can have simply the, the centripetal force uh, will be balanced by, the, by the, the magnetic force and that will be QVB. And from here we can calculate the radius of the orbit. So this scanning uh, will cancel. We will have R equal to MV by QB where M is the mass of the charged particle on which this magnetic field is applied, and Q is the charge, and B is the, uh, the magnetic field. So, so, so these, these are the meanings of these symbols. Now, inside the Ds, what happens is that the speed of the ions remain constant. Uh, after it has traveled the half cycle, its speed is constant uh, for the half cycle. And and what happens is that the ion becomes, uh, when this ion comes to this edge, say for example, the ion reaches to this edge, uh, uh, edge of D, D1. Uh, uh, if in the meantime, the, the potential on D1 and D2 has changed the sign. So that means uh, the positive ion will receive an additional acceleration uh, due to the oscillator voltage uh, while going across the gap between the Ds. Right? So what's going, going to happen here? Consequently, the ion will travel in, in circular path. So by the time uh, the charged particle will reach here, it will have an attracting potential. And that attracting potential will take, the, take this ion faster. Thus, the ions experience uh, this kind of accelerating electrostatic force uh, 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 due to the oscillator voltage and in, and in proper phase. Uh, and gaining energy every time now, every time, the, the moment it is, it's going to reach to the edge of D2, uh, the polarity on D1 will be such that it's going to attract this, uh, this ion at, at this time. Uh, at this at this point of time, uh, so uh, so so the time t spent by the particle under one d, if we have, so now if we want to write down the time that's being spent by this particle uh, uh, in one t, so what will be that? That will be the time period by two. And what what should be the time period? Uh, so so time period you, we can for 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 this semicircle it is pi r by nu, simply. It's pi r by nu. So what would be t? So t, t would be, close it down, uh, so t is uh, going to be uh, 2 pi by nu, and for r, what is r? r I had written somewhere, it is this. r is uh, mv q mv by, it's divided by, it's mv divided by qb. So for this r, we have mv by qb. So we will have the, the time period that will be 2 pi m by qb. Simple. As simple as that. So this will be the total time taken by, the, by this ion to have one circle around this whole, uh, whole uh, uh, circular trajectory. So this, uh, this T is our time period of this radio fre frequency. It's to be noticed here uh, that, that, that the ion would get accelerated through maximum uh, potential at the gaps only when the time taken by it to travel the semicircular path within the D is equal to half of this uh, uh, half of this time period of the uh, time period of the uh, RF field, then a proper phase has to be available. It will be available to the voltage of the Ds, uh, and there will be resonance between the orbital motion uh, of ions 
and the oscillatory voltage that's being supplied by this oscillator. So the electric field will have the proper direction uh, in order to enhance, uh, in order to enhance the kinetic energy of this ion uh, while shooting down from one d to another d, uh, because you can carry out the resonance uh, between the oscillator and uh, and and these uh, and the motion of this charged particle around these d's. Now that resonance frequency we can write from from here because that nu is uh, simply reciprocal of this time period, okay? So if, if this is reciprocal of this time period, uh, what we are gonna get, we are gonna get something like uh, uh, this resonant frequency is gonna be QB by two pi m. Now this equation has a beauty in it, what's that? This, in, this equation indicates that the, the resonance frequency does not depend upon the radius uh, of the Ds or the velocity of the ion beams, but it, it only depends upon the magnetic field. So, so it depends on magnetic field, it depends on the charge, and it depends on, on the mass of this particle. Uh, so, so the ions during their spiral motion uh, uh, make a large number of transits through the gap between the Ds, D1, T2, T1, T2, T1, T2. T1, T2. It, it keeps on going uh, every time. And, and at, at this time, they are ejected out of the Ds by deflecting the electrode at some point, okay? So, so when it happens, I mean, these ions during their spiral motions make large number of transits through these, uh, through these gaps between the Ds and gaining some fixed amount of energy at each transit till, this, till, this, uh, till the orbit radius becomes equal to the radius of this D that's enclosing this whole thing. Then what we have after that, we have the target. Okay, so when it attains the, the radius of the D, it has the possible maximum energy and it will hit the electrode. And the maximum energy attained by the ion in a non-relativistic case uh, can be calculated and that, that will be simply one half of mv square. So in that case, what will be that energy? That's going to be one half of m, uh, vm square. I'll call it vm. So this is one half of m and v is already calculated. How much is that? Uh, that is Q B uh, R. That's Q B R. No, I'm losing the ink. Uh, that's Q B R uh, by M whole square. So what will be the final equation for the energy for non-relativistic case? That will be Q square B square R. It should be the maximum radius R M square by two M. Okay, so, so the maximum energy attained by the ions uh, uh, is limited by the radius of the D. So, so it, it all depends on, on, on the radius of the D uh, and, and the magnetic field that's applied perpendicular to this D. Uh, such a cyclotron uh, uh, had been used to import uh, kinetic energies of the order of uh, 10 to 50 mega electron volts uh, in case of protons. So this was the basic working principle of a cyclotron. Well, let's talk about Betatron. It's a particle accelerator. And, uh, and think in terms of electrons. Suppose uh, the electrons, if, if accelerated in a cyclotron, they, they certainly go, uh, they certainly undergo a relativistic increase in their masses. Uh, even at low energies, if we have an electron, uh, they have rise in their relativistic mass. And which certainly disturbs the, the state of that, uh, what we call as synchronization. The synchronization is disturbed because of uh, the rise in mass of the electron. And the voltage multiplier and, and Van de Graaff generators, uh, they produce electrons of energies of the order of few uh, few mega electron volts. And uh, talking about Betatron, Betatron is a machine that can accelerate electrons in a stable orbit, in a stable orbit of constant radius by the application of uh, uh, alternating magnetic fields. Alternating magnetic fields. And uh, uh, and uh, so this uh, 
if we think in terms of change in magnetic flux, uh, what it does, if we have change in magnetic flux, uh, it, it induces electromotive force. That means it, in, it, uh, it induces electric field. Now, the first beta-tron, a magnetic, uh, uh, a magnetic induction accelerator, it was constructed by D. W. Kirst uh, at the University of Illinois in, in 1940 to accelerate electrons to, to an energy of nearly 2.3 mega electron volts. And several other beta trons have been constructed since then. Uh, and the largest one of uh, the University of Illinois uh, uh, yields electrons of energy uh, uh, of the order of 300 mega, mega electron volts now. Now, the, the beta tron, what it consists of, it consists of a highly evacuated duff nut uh, shaped chamber which is, which is placed between the poles of an electromagnet. So we have an electromagnet and and between the poles of this electromagnet, there is, there is a definite type of structure. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, this, uh, this, this electromagnet is connected to the alternating electric fields. Uh, uh, alternating electric fields are connected to this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this magnet. And, and the magnetic pole pieces are, are designated in such a manner uh, that, uh, that these have got a strong field uh, in, in the center, in the center with a gradient of magnetic field towards the edges, so, so that the magnetic field is, is maximum uh, at the center. The, the electrons are initially accelerated in an, uh, uh, in an electron gun and are released into, into a circular orbit. They are released into a circular orbit and uh, due to the magnetic field, uh, which is at right angle uh, to, to the plane carrying these electrons. So what we will have, we will have the, the Lorentz force, uh, BEV, uh, in terms of magnetic field, that will give us the, the necessary centripetal force to the electron to move in, in a circular orbit. So, so the story will start here from here. Now, now if I assume that a, a flux uh, of phi, uh, it cuts the orbit, uh, the orbit of this, uh, uh, this electron, and it cuts this orbit and is changed at the rate of uh, d phi by dt due to the change in flux. An induced EMF will, uh, will be produced and that will be causing more speedy motion of electrons. So, uh, so, so if, if, I, if I carry on this, uh, let, let, the, let this induced uh, field component which is tangential uh, to this electron uh, orbit be E naught uh, and the radius of the orbit be say r. Uh, then the induced EMF that we can write uh, that that must be two pi r e naught that must be d phi by dt. So and and the force that's acting on the electrons will be equal to the rate of change of the momentum. So force is basically rate of change of momentum. So if I take on the force of this electron, F is equal to E E, because F is M A and F is E E. Okay. So what we have is for force we have E E naught. That's rate of change of momentum. Now let me call this two for the time being, and let me call this one, and and let me call this three. Now, uh, for P, what I have is P means MV, and, and this MV is, is simply BER. And what will happen to this, uh, to this E0? Now, this E0 will be, uh, it will be D by DT of BER. So, uh, we have E here. This E will be canceled with this E. And we will have electric field. We'll have the induced electric field. What will be that? That will be E naught equals uh, R out because the radius of orbit is constant. dB by dt. So I think uh, we are right till now. So this uh, E and E will cancel, and we will have E naught. Now proceeding from here. If we proceed from here, what are we having is now if I if I use uh, 
2 pi or square uh, db by dt. Okay, what will that give me? That will simply give me the, the rate of change of flux. Okay, so so if we start from if we start from zero flux, if we start from zero flux and uh, and zero field at the orbit, what we have is that this phi is two pi r square b. So this relation between the magnetic flux and uh, and and the field. Uh, at, at the orbit that we have, what it involves, it involves only the radius of the orbit and it, it is independent of uh, the energy or the mass of the particle. You can see the flux is independent of the energy and the mass of the particle. Now, if a large central flux is created uh, uh, initially by the, by the duff nut that we have, by the duff nut shaped magnetic pole that we have, and in order to produce uh, the flux uh, changes, a, a sinusoidal uh, varying current is induced uh, into the coils uh, of this electromagnet during the first quarter of the cycle. So, so what we have is uh, we have uh, we have an electromagnet, and if if I roughly try to draw it, uh, uh, it will be like say, okay. Okay, let's go like this. Let's go, go like this. This is a magnetic pole, and and this will be flux. And and I can think of flux. And here at the edges, it's going to be curved magnetic flux. And here we'll have parallel electro electro magnetic lines of force. And this is another magnetic pole phase. So, so how do we think about it? What we have is we have we have we have a duff nut. We have something like this, where we have this electron, and the radius is r. And the magnetic field that that's given is is p. Now, uh, now, what am I trying to do here? Here is that that uh, that if if I think of uh, if I think of a cycle, something like this. If I think of something like this, and. Uh, now, in order to produce the flux changes uh, in the magnet, what we do is we 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 make use of a sinusoidally varying current. Uh, it is induced into the coils of electromagnet that that I have tried to draw. Now, during the first quarter of the cycle, so this will be the quarter of the cycle, and and uh, this will be time, and this. Uh, this will be acceleration. Now, what's happening is that during the first quarter of its cycle, that that we can see here, uh, uh, what we what we expect is that 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 after the point A, suppose I I consider this as point A. After the point A, the current is disconnected from the electromagnet. And once the current is disconnected from the electromagnet uh, and is connected to some dummy kind of load, some 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 fictitious kind of load, for uh, uh, it was one by fourth for three by fourth uh, of the period. Now, during the interval in which the magnetic flux is changed, the electron makes large number of revolutions. The electron makes large number of revolutions. On a fixed orbit of radius r, and the larger num number of rev revolutions means larger will be the, the energy associated or energy gained by this electron. And this is my sinusoidal current. So I is equal to I naught sine omega t. That should be the case. Now, now, now it, it should be noted here that that the changes change of the flux uh, that takes place in the in the one in one one by fourth of the cycle. Or, or, or during an interval, one by four nu, if I define it, uh, when nu is the frequency 
of this alternating uh, current. Electrons travel with the velocity close to the velocity of light. And therefore, the total distance traveled uh, is, uh, what will be the total distance? Total distance traveled. Uh, uh, that will be given by C by 4 nu. Okay, so C is the speed and 4 nu, uh, it has the dimensions of, overall dimensions of time. So, so speed is distance by time, so distance is speed into time. So, uh, so, so the number of revolutions uh, that are given, that let us suppose that number of revolutions in that period of time, in that zone of time, that will be total distance traveled, total distance traveled by circumference of the orbit, circumference of orbit. Now in doing so, what we will have is we will have uh, n equal to c by 4 nu by 2 pi r and what we are going to get is c by 8 pi nu r. So all of the symbols have their usual meaning. c is the, the speed of light, nu is the frequency uh, and, and r is the radius of the orbit in which this electron is, is moving. Now to move on from here, Now, uh, the flux variation, so what will be the flux variation? The flux variation can be written as phi is equal to phi naught sine omega t. For omega, what we have, it is 2 pi nu, so phi is going to be phi naught sine 2 pi nu t, where this omega is the angular frequency. And, and the energy gained by the electrons per turn, in every turn the electron is gaining an energy. So that energy that will be gained by an electron will be what? That will be E d phi by dt. And that's going to be E times. Uh, what is this d phi by dt? If we differentiate this, it's going to be phi naught. Uh, 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 that's going to be E is over here, okay? And phi naught will be out. Uh, then sine will give me cos. And the internal derivative of 2 pi uh, uh, nu t. So, so I must have 2 pi nu as the internal derivative, so inside I'll have cos 2 pi nu t. That should be the case. And, and the average value over a quarter period, average value over a quarter period, that means over a quarter period, what will be that? That will be 2 pi uh, nu e phi naught uh, uh, times 2 by pi. That should be the case. Therefore, the total energy gained by the electrons, what will be the total energy now? Total energy gained by electrons. What will be that? That will be, say, for example, A, that will be number times the average average energy per turn, right, so average energy per turn, so what's that going to be? We have already calculated this, uh, what's called as uh, uh, n, so n is already calculated, how much was that? That was, uh, uh, that was c by 8 pi nu r times 4 e, 4 e nu phi naught. So the energy that we will have, that will be E c phi naught by 2 pi r. So, uh, so this will be our energy that's gained by, by these electrons. Now, as the operation of the beta tron is independent of relativistic uh, increase of the mass, because we can see that the dependence of the energy of this particle is independent of the mass of the particle, it may appear that we can achieve extremely high energy uh, particles. Uh, maybe high energy particles are obtainable, but, but that's not the case. Uh, that, that's not the case. The, the, because, this is because the electromagnetic radiation, there is electromagnetic radiation loss. Electromagnetic radiation loss. And, uh, and this, uh, uh, what we call this as electromagnetic radiation loss, it increases basically uh, uh, as, the, as the fourth power of energy gain. Fourth power of energy gain. 
and this certainly sets the it certainly sets uh, the, the high energy limit uh, to the electrons that can be generated in beta tron and that limit goes up to 300 mega electron volts and uh, also for higher energies what we need we need greater quantity of iron is re required for having that uh, electromagnet and having electromagnet of big dimensions is very costly uh, and for the same reason it's not used to accelerate uh, heavy ions uh, for, for protons of 30 mega electron volts uh, it requires a radius of eight times than that for the electrons uh, so, so these are the, the limitations of beta tron. But what we can do, we can have electrons uh, of the, whose energies are of the order of 300 mega electron volts using beta tron, and uh, and we can see that uh, there, there is no inclusion of relativistic effects in beta tron. Now, certainly there are uh, there are relativistic effects that come in action when we think of uh, uh, cyclotron. And the maximum energies of the particle attainable using cyclotron cannot be increased definitely, I mean indefinitely, uh, by the increasing the size of the apparatus uh, 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 because of the relativistic uh, uh, increase in the mass of the particles. So, uh, so we have m equals m naught by under root of one minus v square by c square. So m is the relativistic mass and m0 is the, the rest mass of the, of the particle. Now, as the speed of, uh, of the particle increases uh, to become comparable with the speed of light, so when this speed increases to be comparable with the speed of light, its mass m uh, increases appreciably. Therefore, the frequency that we have, the frequency that we already calculated, that's qb by uh, 2 pi m, uh, goes on decreasing and uh, and the particle traverses each d too slowly the d's that we have uh, in case of cyclotron so uh, 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 and, and what happens is that uh, uh, they, they become they become more and more out of step with the applied uh, potential uh, difference and and dis disturbing the the synchronization uh, uh, the synchronization between uh, between the the alternating uh, the alternating field and, and and the magnetic field. Now the, the frequency of circular motion of the particle would be in that case what would be that that will be uh, that will be q b by two pi m naught and uh, this thing will be one minus v square by c square whole to the power of uh, one by two. So this uh, this will be so we can see that the dependence of the frequency uh, on, on the on the speed of the particle. Now there are two plausible uh, uh, the, the, there are two methods uh, that that we can think uh, here uh, theoretically to overcome uh, to overcome this uh, to, to overcome this situation. Uh, the, the first important thing is that uh, uh, if we can keep this factor that we have uh, constant. And in order to keep it constant, uh, the orbital frequency of the ions uh, 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 remains uh, unchanged. So it, it is achieved by using uh, such an electromagnet that we have, uh, for which the magnetic field increases. You cannot have you cannot have a constant magnetic field. You have to increase the magnetic field with the increase in the velocity of the uh, <coughs> of the orbital uh, orbiting uh, uh, ion, and. <coughs> I'm <clears throat> sorry. Uh, uh, so, so during uh, so, so so during their motion, uh, what what we say is that uh, along the orbit of uh, increasing order, what what should happen is the magnetic field should be consistently uh, increased. And such kind of accelerators where we can where we enhance the magnetic field in, in accordance with the velocity of the the charged particle, we call, we call them as synchrotrons. Synchrotrons. And the, the, the next important thing is that the decrease in ion frequency uh, due to the relativistic effects uh, that, that we talked about, that, that due to the relativistic effects, what's going to happen is that this frequency is, is going to decrease. Uh, and this can be compensated by reducing the frequency of the applied, uh, uh, the, the applied 
uh, alternating electric fields uh, with the increase of the velocity uh, such that the two frequencies always equal each other and uh, and such uh, uh, such kind of accelerators are called as uh, synchro cyclotrons synchro cyclotrons so so the points are very uh, clear here that in order to have the compensation uh, for, for uh, for the frequency effects, what is important is that in this case we have to to, to balance the the RF, the radio frequency, uh, the alternating electric field that we are supplying uh, to the system. Now, uh, if there is uh, a matching between the frequency uh, that, that's being supplied and the frequency that's being increased in uh, to the particle, uh, such an such a, such an accelerator is called as synchro cyclotron, and uh, and the previous one which I talked about is that 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 uh, what we do is uh, we 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 try to keep this factor constant if we try to keep this factor constant uh, to keep the orbital frequency of the ions unchanged and this kind of thing is achieved by using uh, electromagnets uh, for which the magnetic field increases uh, with the with the increase of uh, in the, with the increase in the velocity of the ions uh, uh, during their motion along the orbits so such kind of uh, accelerators are called, called as synchrotrons now let us define this uh, principle of phase stability i mean the gap separation uh, that we have uh, and the frequency of or a field and the strength of magnetic field uh, uh, they are they are so adjusted that the particle of specific energy that that's crossing the particular gap at, at a specified equilibrium phase of, of the accelerating uh, field will cross the next gap at the same time so so that that that's the position uh, that, that's the position of having uh, ha having a straightforward uh, acceleration of these charged particles now the particles of correct energy uh, with 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 slightly uh, i should say incorrect phase uh, uh, they have got an automatic tendency to move towards the correct phase at some uh, successive transits now uh, if i if i think of writing omega that's 2 pi nu this omega is the angular frequency and and this omega is basically qb by M. So if we uh, uh, if we go with the if we go with writing Q B C square by M C square, where C is the speed of light, uh, uh, we can we can think of uh, in terms of kinetic energy, which is basically M C square minus M naught C square. So from this, I can have M C square equals K minus M naught C square. I can think of using that uh, M C square here. So what am I going to get is Q B c square by k minus m naught c square uh, so so this should be plus okay k plus uh, m naught c c square now where well, we understand this m naught c square is the rest energy and k is the kinetic energy of the particle now the kinetic energy of the ion that we have the, the principle of phase stability we are trying to understand here uh, uh, so, so in relation uh, uh, to, the, to the variable frequency that we have with this cyclotron, uh, uh, we, we can we, we would like to uh, we would like to have have, it, have 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 an illustration here and try to understand this phase stability. So, what I have is uh, I'd like to have a plot, and let me give some something like this, something like this like this and and something like this okay so this is my potential and so this is my V and this is my phase okay so uh, I have here uh, this is my say this is my my zero and uh, and and this is my pi and and then 2 pi and then then 3 pi and so on and so forth now let us assume that 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 an ion moves in a circular path okay the ion is moving in a circular path 
and in some uniform magnetic field. And on each revolution uh, crosses the gap, if we go back to the cyclotron. It has to cr cross the gap between the accelerating electrodes to which the applied uh, to which we have applied an oscillating electrical field because by the time the charge reaches here it is further attracted by this portion this is say this is D1 and this is D2 now under these conditions there are certain stationary or or or, or stable orbits in which the ion can move now let us assume that uh, that the ion which crosses uh, the gap at the instant of uh, time uh, uh, when the oscillating electric field is just uh, passing through the through the value of zero, when this oscillating electric field is is just uh, passing through uh, through the value of zero, the ions are then said to have zero phase in that case. So we'll say that the ion has the zero phase, and, and this condition uh, can be seen as zero, two pi, and two pi, and three pi, and so on and so forth. So, so these points are, are, are a reflection of the zero phase uh, uh, of the ion that, that's moving in this circular orbit. Now these, these ions uh, uh, will neither, uh, they will neither gain or lose energy and will continue to revolve at, uh, at, some, uh, at a constant frequency in the same orbit. Hence the revolution of the charged particle is, is thus, thus automatically uh, synchronized uh, with the changing frequency of the accelerating potential that we have. And an and, and ion uh, which crosses the gap at the earlier instant, say, say it crosses, uh, crosses the, the gap at some earlier instant, say that is, that is T1, uh, uh, it, has, it has positive phase. So what's going to happen here is that uh, it will gain speed. Uh, it will it will gain speed and energy because the voltage is positive, uh, and its rotation frequency will will decrease in accordance uh, 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 in accordance uh, with, with the original law. So the ion will take slightly longer time. Uh, it will take slightly longer time to return to to the gap. It will take a, a slightly lo longer time to return the, the gap. Uh, that we we can show by uh, uh, that we can show by some time. Say say for example, uh, t two. And uh, uh, and and then consequently there will be t three uh, with subsequent accelerations. Now when when the voltage uh, across the gap is smaller. Uh, when it is small, smaller, I mean, uh, what happens here is that eventually the particle will cross uh, the gap at, at zero phase. The particle will cross this gap at this zero phase, but with excess energy it has received and will continue uh, and will continue the phase shift in, into the decelerating uh, uh, or retarding part of this cycle, uh, which is the, the negative side of this this potential. So the particle uh, the particle is uh, is losing energy and speed, and its frequency at the same time increases, and it is returned to the zero shift. Thus, there has been a phase oscillation, so it returns back to the to the to the zero shift, and. Uh, uh, and a phase oscillation about this equilibrium phase that we have, uh, zero pi, uh, and the ions uh, uh, would have oscillated about a stationary or equilibrium orbit at these points. So, so it should be borne in mind that the condition of the phase stability is, is, is satisfied when ions cross the gap, when ions cross the gap, when field is zero, and and changing uh, uh, from acceleration to to deceleration, from acceleration to to retardation, and not when it is changing from deceleration to acceleration. So, dear students, uh, let's talk about synchro cyclotron, and uh, uh, and this cyclotron has advantages over. Uh, or, or a simple cyclotron, and uh, what is it basically? It's it's a positive ion accelerating machine. So using synchro cyclotron, what we do is we accelerate we accelerate positive ions, 
and 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 we accelerate these positive ions based on the principle of phase stability that we have discussed phase stability and and what it does uh, it utilizes frequency modulated uh, this this phase stability uh, utilizes frequency modulated radio frequency field and and the slowly varying frequency or radio frequency uh, field compensates uh, what it compensates it compensates for the departure from uh, uh, from the from the resonant uh, for, from the resonance condition and what it does it it maintains the particle in a strict uh, resonance uh, uh, in, a, in a strict resonance by by accelerating them uh, along expanding phase stability uh, of the orbit now the the name of synchro cyclotron uh, it, it simply uh, it, it was suggested by by macmillan uh, due, due to its similarity of this machine's behavior uh, at least in some respects uh, to the synchronous uh, motor now uh, uh, now in this uh, in this uh, uh, in this particle accelerator uh, what we have is that uh, in this machine we have uh, the, the number of revolutions uh, made by the ions uh, need not to be kept uh, need not to be kept small so the revolutions of the of the ions particles that we will have here uh, and hence uh, what we do for that is uh, uh, the, the peak rf voltage uh, uh, that that we supplied through this uh, rf um, oscillator uh, it is kept uh, as small as uh, it's 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 basically kept smaller than that of uh, what's used in a cyclotron. Uh, therefore, what is done here is that we have uh, we make use of uh, a single D can be used here. A single D uh, can be used here, uh, and uh, and and this uh, this single D uh, you don't require any additional D, D to produ produce the the high field uh, between them uh, and in place of the second D. I mean, uh, and what 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 this second D plays the role here is that uh, it's used as uh, as earth sheet uh, sheeting the earth is used so that this setup is placed uh, this whole setup is placed uh, uh, in in a vacuum chamber which which is between the poles uh, of of a very large uh, electromagnet we have an electromagnet uh, and between these poles this this whole setup is is placed and 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 what's more important here is that that the pole faces uh, they, they they are specially shaped they, they are not exactly the shape that I, I have tried to show here they have some special designs because what we want is uh, we want the variation of magnetic field so this setup is placed inside the vacuum chamber and and we have these pole faces uh, these pole faces are 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 specially shaped to provide the field uh, to provide the field which decreases almost linearly away from the center so so the geometry of these magnetic po po poles have to be such so uh, uh, so, so so if it starts from the center uh, say say from uh, uh, say from 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 center it starts with, with the magnetic field of the order of 10 to the power of uh, sorry 15 uh, uh, kilo gauss uh, so, so does the field pr uh, that's produced uh, will focus on the particles in 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 the in the in the uh, yeah, what we call as in the median plane, uh, and the oscillating potential is applied between the D uh, and and the grounded sheet that we have, and and, the, and what happens is that that, that the radio frequency uh, uh, of the order of 15 kilovolts uh, uh, is supplied. Uh, 15 kilovolts uh, is supplied by the tube oscillators, uh, uh, tube oscillator circuit circuits, uh, uh, which which are basically modulated by coupling to some 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 variable capacitors, and and by means of uh, uh, by means of this capacitor, the, the frequency of oscillating potential that we have uh, from here is decreased uh, to compensate for the gain in the mass uh, of the particles as its speed uh, goes on increasing. Now, as the rate of decrease of the radio frequency is small, particles gain uh, energy in small, small increments and, and make thousands of revolutions uh, before they exit uh, to hit the target. 
and 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 at the same time what it does is that uh, due to due to due to relativity small values of this rf uh, field uh, and and phase oscillations uh, they they complete several hundred uh, revolutions now if, if we have to go with the with the with the principle of working of of this uh, this synchro cyclotron so what is the frequency of the the, the revolution is that is BQC square by which was already obtained 2 pi times m naught c square plus k and all the symbols have their usual meanings b is the magnetic field q is the charge of the ion uh, uh, charge of the ions that have been used and uh, m is the rest mass of these particles k is the kinetic energy uh, uh, and and this equation is an mks system now uh, in in relativistic case what's going to happen is that if we go with some mathematical calculations here uh, so in uh, in relativistic case in in relativistic case what we have is uh, we have e equals m c square and uh, and for m what what i'm i be using m naught by uh, 1 minus v square by c square whole to the power of 1 by 2 uh, and and what this is equal to this is simply equal to m naught square sorry m naught c square plus k right so yeah, so so for the same case if i call this as equation 1 uh, what's momentum momentum is the product of mass and and volume so for mass i'll be using uh, relativistic mass so that's 1 minus v square by c square uh, times v uh, so that should be the case now if i if i do scaring on both sides uh, uh, in this equation and uh, if i do the scaring what am i going to get here is So on scaring, I will get uh, p square is equal to m naught square v square by one minus v square by c square, and let me multiply this equation with c square. So this will be here c square, and here I'll have the c square. So I can I, I can make make the transformation. I mean this is p square and and c square. Uh, okay, I would like to if I add here uh, m naught square c to the power of four. Uh, the same thing will come here m m not uh, square uh, this has to be square yeah m not square uh, v square then c square by 1 minus v square by c square and plus m not square c to the power of 4 what i have done is i have added this term uh, on, on both the sides of this equation so so doing so what am i going to get is that i have p square c square plus m naught square c to the power of 4 and and uh, this will simply give me m naught square c to the power of 4 by uh, 1 minus v square by c square all right so uh, uh, since so uh, this thing is already uh, this thing is already there i mean here we can uh, we can see if i take the square of this if i take the square of this uh, what i'll get i'll get uh, uh, c square can get c square is here okay so here i'll get uh, uh, so here if i take if i scare it on both the sides what i will have is uh, this will become 4 and and this will become m naught square and this uh, root and and the square will cancel so m naught square c to the power of 4 by 1 minus v v square by c square is simply m naught c square plus k whole square so instead of this uh, what am i going to use is m naught square c to the power of 4 uh, i'm going to use uh, m naught c square plus k whole square that should be the case now what would i like to do is i would like to open this i would like to open this so what will i get is p square c square plus m naught square c to the power of 4 that will be m naught square c to the power of 4 plus k square plus twice m naught c square and k that should be the case and we can see this term and this term is going to cancel so we have p square c square is equal to k square plus twice m naught c square and k so this is p square c square is k times uh, k plus twice m naught c square.
All right, so uh, uh, now immediately what we can do is we can bring down this C square down. So, uh, so we will have P square uh, equals to uh, K times K plus twice M naught C square by C square. Now for P, what we have, P is simply MV. Uh, and, and for P square, what will I have, I will have MV whole square. So this MV whole square, uh, we have the equation when, uh, for centripetal force and, uh, and magnetic force. What is that? That's MV square by R is equal to BQV. This is the case, right? So from here, uh, we could uh, calculate this MV, MV's whole square. So this is MV whole square will come out to be BQR whole square. So instead of uh, P square, what am I going to use here is BQR whole square is gonna give me K times K plus twice M naught C square by C square. So from this equation, I can have the radius of the orbit. So what will be that? That will be uh, uh, that will be k times k plus twice m naught c square by b q c square uh, whole raised power one by two. So this will be uh, this will be my uh, my radius. So for each value of particle kinetic energy that will for each uh, value of the, the particular pi kinetic energy of the particle has uh, in the magnetic field, there is a particular orbit. For each value of this k, there is a particular orbit, and and this orbit is uh, uh, is is given by by this equation. The radius of that orbit is given by by this this equation, and uh, and at the same time, the the specific uh, frequency of revolution. Uh, if we talk about uh, the the frequency of frequency of revolution. So what will be that? That will be nu is qb by 2 pi m. That's well understood. And uh, uh, and and here, uh, what I'll have is, I can simply write down this as qb by 2 pi m naught. Now, now, centrocyclotron suffers from important uh, disadvantages. That, that only a small fraction of the, the injected uh, 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 ions are admitted into the expanded uh, uh, phase stable orbit, the, the stable orbit in which the, these electrons are, sorry, these ions are, are, are put uh, of, of uh, they are the stable orbits, orbit radius and, 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 uh, and they have specific energies. Now the output beam current is, is therefore uh, of the order of uh, one micro ampere, one micro ampere. And uh, the, so, so synchrocyclotrons cannot be used to accelerate electrons uh, because, uh, because the required range of frequency modulation in those cases will be extremely, extremely large.